Hello humans, welcome to Game Development Operations from start to finish and this is the Perforce version control video and we're going to talk about how to set this up locally. Okay, so first and foremost what do you need for version control? Well you need the server, right? I mean there's no point in versioning anything unless you have the server itself. So what we're going to do is just forget about this and we're going to go to Perforce. There you, there you go, helix.com. Uh, leave this place right and there we go you got your uh, this is their front page currently anyway in the future I don't know what it is now obviously you could always navigate through here but I'm not sure actually how would you get to the download you know page so just type in downloads and here you go now there's a bunch of stuff here plugins for every different language right you got your Ruby you got PHP Perl blah 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 you know all these SDKs and APIs now uh, the an SDK means a software development kit and API means application programming interface and they're all different stuff for basically the same thing it's just a bunch of commands it's a library right um, the API is more of a well it's an interface and uh, the SDK is just a bunch of commands it's like a library Okay, anyway, forget about this stuff. We don't need this. No, no, no FTP plugins, no FTP stuff. You're not going to be having any fancy uh, server setup. Or there, if you're using Unity, obviously you can get the plugin here. However, uh, the Unreal Engine already has its plugin, in, you know, integrated in there, so you don't need to download anything fancy for that. Okay, uh, these are some utilities. Obviously, like if you can uh, search stuff on your, uh, you know, in your uh, on your server, you probably won't need this in the near future. And generally, you first need your um, a server. So go to the Helix server here. Uh, choose the uh, obviously the operating system you're running on, and choose the um, the bits. Uh, sorry, the the architecture of your um, you know of your uh, processor. Okay, so you can have obviously the Windows itself, which is just the ex executable file, which you don't need at this stage. This is only for upgrades, as far as I can understand. Uh, you need the installer, which is the whole thing. Okay, you can click on more info to find out what this is all about. But in general, this uh, this is more than sufficient enough. Now you're gonna click download, and this is obviously gonna go into this um, registration type deal. Now you don't need to register. I mean, you have to click this, but uh, you know you don't have to. Put anything realistic you can put whatever you want here um, you know you can put any address that you want and then you need obviously um, what happened here seriously this did not work okay use a yacht mail account this always works but seriously Okay, all right, never mind. So we basically set all this up. Okay, you get, you get your company name, right? And you select your country, or I don't call it uh, Webit Island, whatever it is. And you can say that you're some fancy director type executive, and you agree to their terms and services. And you click register, and it's going to download, you know, your file. Now, I've already downloaded this actually twice, so uh, we could go to um, downloads if I can find this. Right here's your Helix version and engine. So click on that. It's going to start installing. Now it's going to extract first the actual installation files, and then it's going to ask you for what you want to install. Now what you want to install is your P4D and the command line. All right, you don't need the broker or the proxy. You can obviously click on them to see what they're about here in the feature descriptions. But in general, this is about connectivity and stuff like that. So like unless you're going to be running your own server physically, you really don't need this. Um, and then you're gonna have to actually choose where you want this stuff installed. Now, to be fair, um, you could obviously, you know, you could obviously just install it, you know, uh, on your, uh, you know, default file. But if memory serves me correct, this is actually where you're gonna store all your server stuff. So maybe you should choose. It's better to choose a. Um, it's better to choose a, a drive that has a lot of space. So if you look at my computer, for example we have c drive which only has 37 uh, 35 gigs available whereas the you know the bigger hard drive it, also you don't want to put it on an ssd obviously you want to put it on a hard drive so you could put it somewhere where you got an, uh, enough space so um we're gonna say right i'm gonna put this in um source control there we go and that's where this stuff is gonna be at 
And you can obviously choose the same for uh, you know different stuff, but in general, you should better just bas bas basically use one uh, directory. Then we click next after that, and here you define the port number. Now, in general, this is the port that should you should leave this in to default, to be honest. Okay. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, so you could you could basically have this on the default uh, in the default place, right? You can have this in your system or whatever, but like it's too late already for me. Um, so you know, whatever. This is this is where the server is going to be. It's my bad. Right, this is the directory where the executable will be installed and all this stuff will be versioned. Uh, all right, let me just do this the proper way because uh, I made a little mistake here. All right, I'm gonna do this again. Now, obviously, you don't need to do this locally, but you know, whatever. So, there's perforce, and now you're gonna choose here the server itself, and now you're gonna go to your fat place and put it in source control and this is your server and this is your port number okay uh you, you should remember this obviously but usually it's 1.16666 so don't uh, don't change it click next and then this is the name of the server localhost is fine if you're hosting this locally you can obviously change it somehow but this is the username which is going to be which you're going to be connecting with so you know put whatever you want there and your text editing application will be used for differentiating against computer like uh, sorry text and strings and stuff uh, that uh, you know can be merged in general uh, so this should be already selected uh, by default here to your whatever your default text editing application is so click next and this is going to start the installation process and it's you know it's going to take a maybe a couple of minutes or an hour or 10 hours no i'm joking it's just it's a very quick installation so click finish and just to check that it's running right uh look at services look at services and you know perforce and there's your service perforce version engine so you know there's all of this explained here enables blah 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 so you can, you can you can look at this and say this is your server okay this is your server it doesn't take a lot of uh, processing power or anything so as long as you have this running here your server is available to you now, after that you're going to go and download the um visual where's the visual client like swarm desktop and web yeah there we go so this is your administration tool the command line and the merge and you know this is your ver basically visual stuff okay um you need this because uh you need access to it unless you want to use the command line which is obviously possible it's just kind of like why would you do it unless you're running linux or something so you're going to go to do the same process again select your uh, architecture and then download the the version whatever you want and install it now i already have this installed so let's just connect to the server and see what we've got okay so uh localhost uh, port 16666 and then you just you know write your username and click OK oh, my bad you have to actually uh, create a username first so we're gonna create a username for this uh, this is the first username right so you're gonna write your uh, the user you, you write your name which would be I don't know Habib uh, I don't know whatever Habib Salam there we go this is some weird name uh, you don't need a password here but uh, you know you need an email so do the same thing again here yacht mail Dot com. It doesn't even need to be a legit email uh, because I even made a typo here. Because this is this is only for your server administrator to actually be able to send an email. So if you got a company, this would be your company name. Company.com. So save this, and this is your user, and now you're going to connect. Right? This is your stuff. You're going to connect. And boom. And look at what it says now. If you proceed, you become a sole user with super user access. In other words, you're going to be the guy who's going to be managing all of this. So you're going to click OK. And um, you've got a couple of uh, things here in this interface. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. So this is going to show you how much di di uh, disk space you have um, and show you, you know, what's the size of all your files here. And, um, you know, you're going to have uh, access to user groups. You can add a new user, for example, if you want some of your friends to work here, you just, you know, write their name. If they need a password, write a password, uh, email their full name if you want to. You can just have a different um, uh, available, like, uh, 
know, security clearances, uh, etc. Like you don't really need this. Uh, you know, once you start, you just need to set up a depot. Now, a depot is uh, well, it's already set up automatically. But this is basically your server. This is your like this is the hard drive where everything is going to be um, saved at. Okay, this is where everything is going to go into. And uh, it's best to like you can delete this one obviously right and you can make your own so um, I don't know let's say um, we're gonna make a game uh, but we'll make the depot later all right we'll make the depot later uh, but whatever you want to do you can just say file new depot and you know say uh, I don't know flying saucers white space yeah no no white spaces you can actually set it up as what kind of depot you want uh, remote archive whatever like this you just don't bother with this for now and there you go you have a depot for flying saucers okay so uh, as you can see it's pretty easy to work with right after that you just go into your p4v and you connect to it and you create workspace but we're gonna go into this bit a little bit later once we already have a server installed in other words we're gonna have a server installed um, in, that we're gonna work with now obviously we'll probably be working with this with the local version because it's just gonna be us or in, in this case only me and I don't know how many people you got but the workflow is essentially the same for um, you know for cloud um, servers or local servers it doesn't really matter all right so you're gonna close this connection for now close connection please for some reason it doesn't want to close it but it doesn't matter just forget about it. close the, the whole thing and uh, um, right so you can skip the next video if this is what you're going to do in the next video i'm going to be showing you how to actually install a perforce server on the google cloud platform and how to use it um it's a little bit longer than this now this is obviously this just include like you download this stuff right and install it and boom you got a you got a version control um, however, it's you know it's a little bit different when it comes to your uh, you know virtual machine on the cloud. Okay, so anyway, that's it, guys. I'll I'll see you next time when we actually go on to uh, the uh, virtual machine stuff. Yeah, peace. I'm out.